so to recap we have discussed about uh, what are the benefits of onboarding an application in IGA product and uh, second step we have discussed about choosing a connector right once you have decided the connector uh, then you can initiate the requirement gathering based on the connector what are the details it is expecting right so in the requirement gathering first ask that team how many environments they have basically they might have four or five environments maximum for any application in the world right so dev development environment sid system integration testing uat user acceptance testing and production right so in case if you are uh, sale point identity iq you might have three environments dev then uh, uat and production or dev qa and production if you are sale point i didn't know you will have only two tenants sandbox and production or non-prod and production for other uh, iam products it depends maybe you will have two environments if it is cloud-based for sure like savient which is cloud-based you will have only uh, two environments i believe savient also provides sandbox whereas enter id i don't think so there is no uh, even if you take microsoft azure cloud there is no non prod concept there only production will be there uh, i think enter id is uh, production only i worked in enter id once i set up i did set up from scratch there was no non production environment like that just production only but anyway it depends upon the client as well how they build their uh, uh, infra infrastructure right it depends so now you need to see how many environments you have if you have two only so considering the modern isaia products even i worked in forge they are also dev and production only i mean two environments non-prod and production so considering this modern isaia products i believe i'll come to a conclusion as for sure and on average you will you might have only two environments non-prod and prod so now you need to pick up only two environments from the application team or you can pick up three maximum not more than that ask them inform them that we will take two environments one is production for sure and second one is either sit or uat dev is not a good idea because dev is meant for that's why it is called as development environment right it is meant for developers let them test whatever they want to whereas sit and uat that is used for testing purpose so whether you uh, use sit environment or not but uat is for sure you need it that's where the testing right business testing will be performed so i suggest like go with uat and production if this, this is the case so i'll inform application team as i'll go with uat and production what do you say what's your suggestion in case if they say that uh, uat is also kind of production we don't use normally only for business testing we use so better you do one thing in your non-prod you go with sat in production integrate both uat and production so why uh, uat in production only not in our non-production I mean UAT application UAT in our production only, IZA production, not in non-production. Why? See in our sandbox or non-prod environment, I'll refer it as sandbox for now. So in our in our IZA sandbox, we might not have proper data, right? And second, we will not give access to everyone there. We will give access only to our team only, right? Uh, that's how the current uh, implementations are. When I was working in SailPoint Identity IQ a couple of years back, so we used to give access to our QA environment or UAT environment to uh, application team or business uh, uh, stakeholders who wanted to test. But the thing is, there in UAT, we used to maintain replica of production. Almost there will be very good uh, data will be there. You will have proper data to initiate the testing. Whereas if you take dev environment, it you will not have that much. You will not have uh, good data to test. It will be time consuming for us to create all the test data as per the requirements of application team. It's going to take a lot of work for you as well. Okay. Uh, that's why we uh, application team, uh, that's the reason right? we are calling it as UAT, user acceptance testing. That will not be happening in our dev or SIT environments okay so when i worked in sale point identity iq it was three environments dev 
uh, UAT or QA, whatever the name you use, and then production. Dev it is for developers. SIT or QA or UAT, whatever the name you use, that is given to uh, or that is used for testing purpose, completely testing purpose. Okay, so now you can inform them the same thing uh, that we do not have proper data for you to test. Whenever we need some testing, we will create data for us. So it's better if you can test in production only. Sometimes application teams come come and ask me like, you know, can I test in uh, non-production? I'll say like, yeah, sure. But if it is really required, I'll uh, uh, set up that in our production. only. So one of the best implementation is, so uh, take two environments only from the application team, not three. Two is good. In case if they insist three, okay, fine, take it three. So if you have two, you will go, let's say you are going with EVAT and production. EVAT will go to sandbox. Production is in our production. If they insist like we need to test it, then uh, create another application in production pointing to UAT. So let them test for a couple of users and uh, let them do the sign off. After that, uh, you can remove that test access, test application, whatever you have created. That's one approach. Second, are you can keep it as well for future references. Okay, but not every application will ask like this. They will uh, be okay with uh, testing in our non-production bias. If they insist us, you can initiate in production and you can remove it. It's not like they will keep testing, right? Only once they will be doing it. So it's kind of temporary work for you. It's not like more work. You just uh, copy paste the configurations you have done in production. Of course, when you do in non-prod, you test thoroughly and then you move the data. You, it's just like copy paste in production. Okay. So then uh, actually we have inside point added now. We call it as a config hub. Even we have VS Code, Visual Studio Code, VS Code extension where we can move the data. It's not like exactly move, copy the data from one tenant to another tenant. We have extensive features out of the box. So we will do only non-prod and in production, we will just load the data from non-prod. You, you do that one more time for UAT, pointing to UAT. Let the application team test. After that, you can remove it. In case if you feel like this is not a good approach, then if you are ready to do that in your non-prod, sure, uh, you give access to those uh, business testers in your non-prod environment. Uh, help them in creating proper users, proper data. Let them test. So here you are going to spend some time um, in creating the data because they'll ask for multi, a lot of scenarios. I feel which is uh, kind of uh, not feasible to, to, to create data for all use cases. Why? They will ask you to, they, they will need to test a lot of functionality. For example, single sign-on. You onboarded an application. Single sign-on is also enabled. Single sign-on is which product you are using. Can you enable single sign-on for these test users? Like it might not be feasible, but in case if you take production, so I've been doing right lot of applications onboarding in sale point. I didn't know. So how I do? So I'll I'll inform application team that I take some of the users from your team only. Test for them. Let us not touch any other users because if any email notifications or if something they find out that some activity is going on the, their record, there might be some unnecessary mail communications or something will happen. That's why we will recommend like you either test IZA team, sale point team, or you use your team members, only our two teams. You take any of us, our users and then test for them. So even if we get something, we'll ignore it. That's what we will inform directly in production. Why in production? Because our data is perfect, real-time data. That's right. Okay. So choose accordingly, either two environments or maximum three environments. No need to go beyond that. But I'll stick with two environments only most of the times. Environment details. So then ask like uh, after choosing UATR uh, and production ask for the environment details like based on the connector or based on the application you are working on. So what are all the details you need? In case if you are working on JDBC, which is used for database connections, so what are the details you need to ask? 
the environment details like what is the ip address what is the host name what type of database it is which port you need to connect to and uh, what is the database name what are the queries sql queries uh, so that you can connect to uh, the database and read the data right if it is web services you will ask uh, api uh, endpoints for all the operations like uh, create operation read operation uh, reading a single user i mean listing a single user listing all users modifying a user adding group or some permissions to the user removing as well and then disable the user delete the user all these operations you will ask them endpoints and you will ask them to create a uh, some authentication mechanism uh, basic authentication is already deprecated it's not recommended to use so go for token based something like oauth2 in case if it is not their only basic authentication fine proceed with that but recommendation is oauth2 or some tokens which have some validity okay so uh, if if you in case if you take oauth2 if a token is uh, compromised the token will have validity like 30 minutes or so after that it will expire anyway that's the reason security why this token based instead of basic authentication okay so you need to gather all those details based on the connector based on the application so in case if it is salesforce different details you need to ask okay then next application owner who is the application owner why do you need application owner um you need someone right to contact to you know contact someone for the requirements or in case in future if something is required who is the contact uh, if someone is uh, uh, you onboarded the application but they are doing something uh, changes or applications at back end which should not be done once an application is onboarded into iza product there should be no changes on user data at the application side if they do that there is no point of onboarding even once i used to hear like this so the application team used to do the changes at application side and we used to wonder like hey what has happened something is changed user is complaining about the access then we when we digged into the logs we came to know that that change has been implemented at uh, application side then my manager told like uh, tell them seriously that if they do any change again we will remove their application from our iza product there is no point of onboarding if they do the changes in case if they do we need to inform someone right we need to have some point of contact that's why application owner is required along with that you need application owner for uh, approvals and uh, uh, access reviews also known as certifications right that's why you need to ask application owner then escalation owner as well sometimes application teams won't respond at all for whatever you need um yeah i i have faced all kind of situations so in case if they are not responding at all then uh, you need to know escalation owner so that you can escalate um application owner will be there as escalation owner most of the times but what if application owner is also not responding then maybe you should have a different person as escalation owner in case if someone is not responding if you are not getting any data and let's say for example um, you have received the credentials it may be basic authentication or token based whatever it is it is expired you need certificate as well for the authentication purpose right so you have received the certificate now certificate is expired you need to connect to this application team asking for the new details renew details renew certificate or token to be created again or credentials password needs to be created again uh, earlier we used to use service account which will never expire the password will never expire but we are not going to use that anymore never expire is going to be deprecated i believe so because we have a solution for privilege management like cyberarc where all the service accounts are managed at cyberarc the password rotation will be there every that uh, 60 days or 90 days or so okay so never expiry will not be there and service accounts will not be used by any end users if you are using any privilege uh, uh, access management uh, solution like cyber or beyond trust then you will not have service accounts with you 
you will be connecting to that cyber arc and then launching applications from there all the service accounts will be in control of cyber arc or any bam solution okay so now if your password is expired you need to ask someone to rotate or to create or something who is the contact application owner but if they don't respond then go to escalation number okay so here uh the main thing is environments and then you need to get environment details like uh, maybe ip address host name and other details creating a uh, authentication mechanism all that stuff <laughs>